What's up guys, Chris from Z1 Motorsports here and we have another familiar 350Z behind me, Matthew's HR Silver 350Z. Uh, so this coming weekend is Jay Zilla and we have stock brakes on this car. Matthew wants to take it around, do a couple hot laps in it. Of course we can't be going out there with stock standard brakes. So we're gonna go ahead and install a set of Carbo Tech brake pads, a set of slotted rotors and of course some Motul RBF 600. So uh, we're going to go ahead and show you guys how to do a track prep brake install. So we've got our Z1 Motorsports slotted and vented rotors here, one piece. We have the Carbotech brake pads. These are made specifically for track days. These are the XP10s and I think these are the XP12s. So yeah, definitely made for full track use, not really advised on the street due to dust and noise. Uh, and then we also have our, as I mentioned earlier, uh, Motul brake fluid. So uh, we're going to go ahead, quickly show you guys how to set up for the track. That's very much a entry level track setup. Brakes and tyres are probably going to be the biggest thing, uh, apart from other general just maintenance, oil changes, stuff like that. But these are definitely very, very important things to have if it's going to be your first track day, or if you're even a seasoned veteran, having good brakes, as you would know, is very important. So let's get stuck into it. All right. So step one is removing our wheel. Step two, I like to bring the whole rotor out so you have enough room, you can kind of see what's going on um, and just turning it as much as you can. Next step is you want to get your 14 millimeter and uh, I believe it's a 17 spanner or just anything to catch the nut that holds in um, the top of the caliper here. So I'm just going to go ahead, attach this on here. Begin to loosen it and then you can just kind of hold this in place, this nut, so you can get that screw out the top. You eventually get to the point where you can just do it by hand and keep these in a safe place. And now just repeat for the bottom. bottom. Now, if you're doing just pads, you can just sort of leave this, just do this top one and sort of slide it off. Um, but we're doing pads and rotors, so we need to take everything off. Should just pop straight off now. And I like to just kind of rest these in a safe place. Uh, next step is to remove the brake pads. They'll simply just slide out. One, two. And we're going to mark these. So these were the outer and these were the inner. This is just if you want to reuse these pads down the line. Uh, you've kept, kept them. DFI, driver's front inner. DFO, driver's front outer. And I've done the same here for the passenger side. Passenger front inner, passenger front outer, and passenger rotor. Okay, so next step, uh, we need to remove our little brace for the caliper. Uh, these can be quite tight, so uh, a breaker bar, or if you want to be ultimate DIY, the back of your jack. Um, you can just slide that in there. We've now got a lot longer bar, and uh, use leverage to your advantage. that much easier. Now whatever you do, do not lose these washers. They're very important. He slides right out. So next step, very important, uh, there is like a protective coating on the uh, rotors. So get a little bit of brake cleaner, give them a quick spray and a quick wipe on both the front and the back. Top tip, get your favorite toothbrush or wire brush 
and just give the outside of the hub here just a quick clean down. Um, they do tend to get a bit of rust and build up here. So just giving these a quick clean like that. Um, you know, an electric wire brush would be even better. But uh, what this does is just essentially give it a nice clean surface for the new rotors to mate onto. Once the surface is clean, we're going to pop our new rotor on. Another top tip, if you want to have the rotor sit flat, grab one of your wheel nuts. That should hold that in place. Once the rotor is installed, we're going to put our new caliper bracket on. Well, not new. Our caliper bracket back on. So once you've got your caliper on, your mustache installed, uh, next is the brake pads. Reminder, this is not a clean job, it's a dirty job. I wear gloves for a reason, but even still, you're gonna get dirt on your pants, shirt, everywhere. So just uh, be aware of that one there, okay? Okay, so before we pop our new brake pads in, it's a good time to push the pistons back. Um, now, the lower the brake pads are, like in terms of use, if they've been used more, these pistons are going to be pushed back further. If they're pretty new, like these ones, um, they're not going to be out as far. Now, there's several different ways you can do this. If you're really strong, you can push them in with your hands. Um, you can use a block of wood. You can use an, a proper, you know, uh, tool for this job. Um, a lot of people use like a, a G-clamp and like the old brake pad. And what you can do is just push it back together, line up the old brake pad, and then basically we just want to squeeze this down and use the pad to push both of these back in. That's why I've opened up the reservoir for the brake fluid, just to allow a little bit of fluid to push back. Um, but just gonna give this one a really good squeeze. And this can take some time. It's going to be a little bit difficult. Having the proper tools for this job does help. Um, the Schwaben um, brake pad tool is really, really nice. It's just a simple ratchet action and it pushes them straight back. Um, but in this case, for a true DIY job, um, something like this will do the job just fine. Okay, so now we're on to the brake pads. Uh, I do recommend some sort of grease or disc brake quiet sort of uh, paste to go on the back of your pads. Um, this stops them making noise when stopping because they will wiggle around a little bit. This kind of takes up the slack, quietens everything down, makes it sound all nice. So um, just a little bit here. I like to apply just a bit where the, uh, right where the pistons will go on the pad. That one a nice rub in there and then anywhere else where the pad will contact we will apply some more of this paste yeah, uh, but smart dudes they were just here uh... all right so now it's time to pop in our brake pads slide them into the factory little location here. So just clip in like so. Beautiful. Don't get the pads the wrong way around. I've seen that plenty of times. You want on the uh, this rough material, not this soft backing. I've seen it plenty of times. So once everything is in place, we will try and slide these brake pads over. And if they don't fit nicely, you may have to uh, push in these pistons a little bit more. Okay. Once he's in, line up the holes and we'll put our bolts back in. Sometimes they can take a little bit of encouragement just to get them lined up. 
But overall, they should just fit just fine. Just holding that nut in place and tightening this back bolt in until she's nice and tight. Okay, everything looks like it's in place. I'd like to do a quick final check over, make sure all my bolts are nice and tight um, and talk to spec. Uh, once we've done that, we'll move on to the rear and then we'll be bleeding the brakes. Okay, so now the front's been done, we're heading on to the rear. We've just taken off the rear wheel and a uh, very, very similar process for the front. Uh, just slightly different as the rear has a little bit more in the way. There's a few more components that make it a little bit trickier of a job. So we have our two main bolts that take off the caliper and then we have the caliper bracket. Um, that one, you are going to need a spanner to get the lower bolt as there is a control arm in the way. So um, other than that, very, very similar. We take everything off. We remove the uh, rear rotor. Make sure your handbrake is down for this exercise. Otherwise, you're going to be struggling all day long. Um, you might need a little bit of uh, encouragement from Hammer just to break it loose, um, like we've had before here. <laughs> um, but otherwise, yeah, it's pretty straightforward. Slap in the new pads and away you go. Okay, so just a quick reminder as well, while the vanes on this particular braking kit are not directional, some are directional, uh, we do have directional uh, little slots here, and that can be found within the part number on the box. So, tab here, RL, that would be rear left. Um, and if it was, you know, RR, rear right, and so forth. So, uh, just a little, update there just to give you guys a heads up um i actually made a mistake myself i didn't even look at the box i just threw these on and uh yeah so i just had to switch these back over uh no big deal but just saves you a bit of extra time a bit of extra fatting about so without further ado let's get these finished up so just going to break loose this uh back caliper cover with our 14. I do recommend spanners here and one with a swivel head will make your life a lot easier. Um, but yeah, the rear are pretty simple to do. Um, the hardest part is probably just getting the rotor off the handbrake. Um, it can be a little bit fiddly. Um, but otherwise, it's pretty straightforward. Okay, next step, grab our 19, and we're going to remove the caliper bracket. Now, these are pretty crusty and gross. I am gonna give these a clean with the wire brush um, for where the pads sit in. Don't know why the rear is more dirty than the front. I guess maybe they've been changed less times. Um, but yeah, they're just looking a bit yucky, so we're gonna give those ones a nice clean up. Ones are tight. Oh, there goes the dust cover. Oh yeah. <laughs> now let's give this bracket a quick clean up. Nothing like a bit of encouragement to get the brakes off. Another top tip is to line up your handbrake adjustment hole with the handbrake adjuster. So you need to move the hub a little bit to line that up by all means. Get it lined up. So now we're just uh, reattaching the 
caliper bracket. Getting that all in. And uh, we'll whack our pads in straight after this. Okay, so we've greased everything up, tightened everything down, do a final nut and bolt check. Don't forget to transfer over the rubber cover from the factory brakes to your new brakes. Um, and then, yeah, just begin your bedding procedure. Um, bedding procedure can change uh, varying pad and uh, rotor that you go with. So uh, just be sure to check the instructions uh, um, depending on which brake pad you choose. Now it's time to bleed the brakes. If you don't know how to bleed brakes, there are plenty of videos on YouTube showing you how. Uh, most importantly, you don't want to let your reservoir go bone dry. Otherwise, you start sucking air in and then you have to re-bleed the whole process all over again. It's a real pain in the butt. Uh, you are going to need something to catch the old brake fluid. Uh, you're going to need a friend uh, to pump the brake pedal for you. All right. You want to pump? Yeah. Okay, so now we have the new brake pads installed. It is time to bed them in. This requires a uh, fairly aggressive bed in with medium braking until the brakes fade. So we'll uh, see how she goes. Get these ones bed in. All right, guys, we just finished in bedding in the brakes. We're gonna let them cool down now as per the instructions for these particular brake pads. Thank you so much for watching. We wish Matthew a very happy and successful track day. These things really pull up amazing. Even for a standard uh, caliper, they work great. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions, give our tech support team a call. We'll see you next episode.